What is going on everyone? It's Chanel Tario bringing you the STL Season 4 Week 9 Battle versus Coach Seensters and the Galactic Greninjas. Coming into Week 9, we did get the win against Coach Cerber last week, getting a nice 4-0 against her. Um, we just knew what she was going to bring, and we uh, capitalized on her team and plays very well. So, coming in this week, we're doing pretty well. Um, but we are facing the undefeated man in charge of the league, just the um, head poncho the uh scary man his roster is just crazy scenesters is 8 and 0 with a uh, plus 23 differential he's got a pretty good team and we just faced uh, megalodios and now we have to face a megalodios so uh going over his draft it consists of tapu bulu infernape amoongus porygon 2 gigalith electivire megalodios exadrill almamola Cofagrius and Alola Muck. Now his team's honestly crazy. The only like missed synergy on his team is probably just having Tapu Bulu with a uh, sand team. But Tapu Bulu with Alola Muck is very good. Um, Amoongus is just good on its own. And it um, Infernape's a great mon and that's a Z user. Megalodios is just crazy. Like it honestly is. And then you have... Um, a little muck to back it up for like the fairies and the um ghost and dark types so like eh. but he did like his team is so thick like most people are just worried about him like just bringing stall after like he brought the first week between amoongus pouring on two cofagrius and alamomola and a little muck just because it's really bulky like that's just a lot to worry about even mega Latios can be used as a bulky mon because of recover and stuff but his team's just scary overall. Um, team build, that was kind of the problem here. Um, one, I didn't really know ex expect what he would bring because a lot of things did very well versus my team or were very good defensive answers, of course, because of his bulk. Um, but for the team, I decided to bring a Sash Doug Trio with Earthquake, Stealth Rock, Toxic, and Sucker Punch. Um, this was just in case he brought sand and he had something in the back, as well as it could trap a decent amount of things on his team. Even though his team is very bulky, I still felt like I could do that. Um, toxic for anything, I feel like um, it would just be better play over Earthquake. Um, Stealth Rocks, of course, for Hazards, and then I have Sucker Punch, just for the Mega Latios, or if um, Exadrill is in the sand. Um, next up, we have a defensive Tangrowth, pretty much max defense, a little bit of speed, um, with the minus death nature. This was so I could outspeed a little muck because I have um, Giga Drain, Earthquake, Leech Seed, Knock Off. Um, Giga Drain, of course, for health, Knock Off for any um, items. Supposed well to get rid of like Eviolate on Porygon 2. Um, Earthquake, of course, to hit just like Amoongus if I need to a little bit. Um, I can hit Exadrill. I can hit um, the little muck, which is mainly it. I can hit Infernape if he wants to overpredict or something, predicting the Melodic. Um, it goes for like a T punch or something like that. So that's why I had to bring defensive Tang. Um, and mainly it was had to be an answer for the Tapu Bulu, the Exadrill. Um, just main offensive things that just really hurt my team. Next up, we also have a defensive Milotic with Flame Orb. Um, this was in order to take on the Exadrill still, just in case, as well as the Infernape and other physical things. Like, it was just kind of scary. We had Scald, Recover, Ice Beam, and um, Dragon Tail. Scald and Recover are just the usuals. Ice Beam in order for me to hit Amoongus and Tapu Bulu and Megalodios. And then I had Dragon Tail just in case I got up Hazards and then I could just switch them out over and over again. Um, also just in case there was any setup in Megalodios. And then next up we had a Spideff Clef Key with Leftovers. Um, this was in order to take on the Megalodios and other special attackers on his team like the Porygon 2 and the Amoongus. Um, Clef Key did a very well matchup against them. It had Spikes, Foul Play, Rain Dance, and Toxic. Um, Spikes, of course, just in case I get Hazards up and if, um, no Spin Drill or no Defog Megalotti. And, um, then we had Foul Play specifically for the Drill. Um, just want to over-predict on an Earthquake and get a Foul Play off or something like that. Um, just needed some form of damage. Didn't really want to bring, um, Play Rough or anything like that. Um, Rain Dance, just in case he brought sand, I could go for Prankster Rain Dance and make it lose the sand in case Drill had a possibility of sweeping at the end. 
then it wouldn't have been able to. And then I had Toxic just because there is so many things on his team that would be very annoying that needed to be toxic. And then next up I have a Specs Coco with Volt Switch, Hidden Power Fire, Nature's Madness, and Dazzling Gleam. This did a decent amount to his team, but I mean Amoongus still ate. Um and Porygon 2 could pretty much eat. But I wanted to bring it just to stop any possible grassy terrain since it would weaken, weaken the earthquakes of my um, Doug Trio or my Tangrowth. And if I decide to bring Joel Run on Mega B, then that would have weakened it. But um, I just wanted to change the terrain, also make it so Amoongus couldn't use Spore versus my team. Um, and it'd just be a decent pivot considering it would just be helpful. Even though Amoongus is the main answer and it does get regenerator, so it doesn't even matter. So that, that kind of sucked. But um... Lastly, we had the Mega Beedrill. We had an Adamant set um, with Swords Dance, Knockoff, U-Turn, and Poison Jab. This did so much versus team. Um, once I checked for like a defensive Alamomola or like a really bulky P2, um, Beedrill could do a lot of work. Because a plus, because uh, the ideal answer is him going um, Cofagrius when Beedrill's out. So if I get up a Swords Dance immediately, then... Um, on the Kofag switching, knockoff, adamant knockoff will kill uh, max defensive uh, Kofagrigus, unless it's Culverberry, of course. So that was my thought process behind the team. And then we go into the battle, and um, I was expecting the Amoongus, as well as the Megalodios, the P2, and the Exedrill. It was just uh, questionable whether he was going to bring um, Sand or Infernape. I felt like it was going to be one or the other, and he opted neither, and he brought Baloo. Which I wasn't really expecting, but it does do a decent amount versus my team. Um, I really should have brought Sap Sipper Mel Tank. I don't know. So I built this team um, right before the battle, probably in like 20, 25 minutes. So this is. That was a bad idea in the first place, because normally when you just do a team that quickly, um, the opponent can uh, expect it all. And surely enough, he tells me at the beginning of the battle before we um, started. Oh, wow, I predicted all six. And then later in the battle, wow, I predicted all of these sets. Because they were basic sets. I didn't bother actually going through it. I, um... Making, like, better builds. If I brought Sap Sipper Meltank, this would have been so helpful, this battle. Um... Sneasel would have been helpful. Sneasel would have done crazy amount of work for his team because he didn't bring Alamomola. Like, if I had Tapu Koko, I should have just brought Alamomola. Those two could have just worked together... And, um, you know, Sneasel just clean up once Tapu Koko take uh, takes care of Alamomola. But I was just worried about Alamomola between, like, it could take on B a little bit, it could take on Dougie easy, it could take on Sneasel, it could take on Meltank if I wanted to bring an offensive Meltank, like, but he didn't bring it, which was weird. But, um, so that's a little rant, so you can kind of expect how this battle went just based off of that. But leading off, Mega B it does easily do so much versus team. Um, the only problem would have been if he led Exadrill. And sure enough, what does this man do? He leads Exadrill turn 1. I cannot risk this being Scarf, so I must immediately go into Tangrowth as he goes for the Stealth Rocks. Um, still, possibility of him being Scarf. Scarf Rocks is a possible set as usual. But he does predict me going for the knockoff, which is amazing, going straight into the Megalodios, which does show to be slightly bulky. As he goes for the HP Fire, having coverage for Klefki, um, just in case he was setting up, I went for Leech Seed. Um, minus Bidef Nature is going to hinder Tangrowth this entire game. And here comes the wall known as Amoongus. As I go Klefki here. Um, I was expecting a Exadrill switch in case I went for Spikes, but no, he stays in. And um, I just go for Foul Play as he has Hidden Power Fire. And at this point, I knew the game was basically over, unless I made a very nice play. Because I made this team too quickly, and I decided not to bring an Amoongus answer, even though I knew it was going to come. Because between Hidden Power Fire, Giga Drain, and Sludge Bomb, it takes out my entire team. It 1v1s everything. It's ridiculous. Like, I don't know why I didn't bring anything that could actually take on this freaking Amoongus. So, that was game at that point already. But I decided to go hard my Lodic here on the HP Fire, just so I can come in and get my Flame Orb. In order to take on Exadrill better. And then I decided to make a hard switch into B. Knowing he'll go for Giga Drain here. 
And knowing this Amoongus had every form of coverage, that's why I made these plays. And right here, I decided to not just go for U-turn. So the play here, basically, I'm expecting the Kofak to come in. I want it to come in. I need it to come in. Because um, I go for an SD here. If I go for an SD, um, I one-shot everything on his team except Porygon. So he's forced to go Porygon, and then just go get momentum based off of that. But the thing is, I can't just U-turn against this dang Amoongus. Or even go for a poison jab because it will just kill me the following turn. And then he just switches out and he gets regen again. See, Amoongus, if it didn't get regen, this battle would have been a little bit different. Because then I wouldn't have to worry about this thing just constantly getting health back. <sighs> but no, I had to go for the Swords Dance and just hope to get, like, a good momentum swing right here. But, of course, he just stays in and he goes for foul play. And we get knocked out there. So, I just decided to go into Clef Key and I'm just going to spam Spikes. Um, because I feel like I have nothing else to do at this point. Um, I feel like um, he was just going to go for a rapid spin or something right here. But he also go for Toxic. So now I know he's not Scarf. So that's when I know Beedrill could have actually just done a crazy amount of work. But go for Foul Play, get a little bit of damage off. Come into my Lodic on the EQ. And EQ still does 31%. I'm like, what? Why is it doing that if he's a bulk set? So apparently he's still max adamant with, with some HP, I guess. But we decide to go for a recover here because hopefully we live. But he just goes into Moongus. That's all he needs to do. All he needs to do is go into Moongus. Um, expecting him to predict here. I just go for Ice Beam to get off damage. Hoping for a crit or a freeze because that's what I need against this thing. We get nothing. Decide to go for a recover. But you know, a casual Amoongus Giga Drain just does 47% to me. So I'm like, okay, that's fun. Um, I should have went for another recover here because of course he gets a prediction off again. And he goes for HP Fire on my incoming Clef Key. Which was good on his part, but right now I'm just letting Clef Key get to go down as I get up these spikes because I have nothing else to do. I just want to make it if um, he doesn't have any hazard removal. That um, because Exodrill's got to have Earthquake and um, Iron Head for its other two move slots, or Iron Head for its last one because we've seen three. And it's up to the Latios if it's got Defog or not. So I th felt like I was taking that risk. So I opted just to get up all spikes. So Amoongus, if it keeps switching in, it doesn't really get his regenerator anymore. And right here was a terrible play. I did not trust my gut here. Um, as you know, we have HP Fire. I wanted to go for it just because I have to. I have to like try to kill this Amoongus. So I have to get as much damage on it as possible. But he knows I'll have something for this Amoongus. Because it walls Tapu Koko like, on paper. Besides like Brave Bird or me going for Nature's Madness just to reduce its health. So... He makes a smart play and just goes into P2. I was so close to clicking Volt Switch here, but I was also just worried about the Exodrill coming in. But even if the Exodrill came in, it's like, whatever, I can make a switch on that. I have Tank Growth in the back. But I just go in my Lodic on the P2 because I can get a free recover. But of course, me going for recover against this thing, what does it do? It allows a free switch in and back into Amoongus. Or no, he goes Latios. Oh yes, he goes Latios. As I get off the recover... He's got the Latios in, just goes for a defog, just to ruin my day. I go for Dragon Tail, we miss, just for insult and injury, but with my luck, it would have went into Amoongus, so it didn't even matter. Um, you know, it just goes for the Roost as I go for the Recover. Um, just freely going to, um, click Ice Beam here, I believe. So Ops Amoongus, we get a little bit of damage off, which isn't bad, I guess. Uh, so to get another... And we get a crit, which is good enough, I guess. Goes for Giga Drain, puts him in range out of an Ice Beam crit again. And we're low on health, but I'm clicking Ice Beam again, because I well, no, I clicked Recover here. That's why he made the switch into P2. And right here, I'm just going to go for Skull and hope for a burn, just so this P2 can be a little bit worn down. As he goes hard, Tapu Bulu. And I'm hoping for a burn, just for something to go my way. And of course not. So just in case he was predicting Tang and going for something else, or if he was like some form of setup, I wanted to get off an Ice Beam. And Ice Beam does absolutely nothing to this thing, as he's got bulk on his entire team. As he goes for the Wood Hammer and takes us out. Now I'm forced to go Coco because I want to get rid of this terrain, which is probably the ideal play, because Amoongus just comes in on anything anyway, so what's the point? As we go for the Volt Switch... And I get to go Dougie here. I just get to go for the Stealth Rocks. Which was the dumbest play. I don't know why I didn't just click Earthquake. 
because Earthquake from that range had a chance of two-shotting. But no, I click Stealth Rocks. It doesn't even matter at this point. I was going to lose anyways. So what's the difference? But then we just go Coco. Of course, he predicts the Volt Switch. And Lottie, of course, we already know has good coverage for Tangrowth. So that's that. I decided to go hard, Top of Go Go, predicting the HP Fire. And no, he goes for Defog again. Why wouldn't he, Ben? Why wouldn't he? But, um... He just makes switches for days. I go for Hidden Power Fire again in case of the Exodrill or Immungus. Just goes P2 again. He was in my head. Like, he knew me at the be like before the battle even started. Because he f ex predicted all six and my sets. Um, given that's probably why he's at the top of the league. But still, like, I thought I would at least put up a decent fight against his team. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit salt because this is... Um, as you see right here, he can just recover up, and then he can just kill me from this point on uh, with P2. But this is the first time I have ever been 6-0'd in league format. Um, and it actually really upsets me, because I thought I was at least going to do decent versus his team. But no, I got absolutely walled because I decided to bring something that bring a team that couldn't kill Amoongus. Um, couldn't kill P2. Uh, that's just that. Like, I had nothing else. Like, it was just a bulky team that I could not take. I had such an offensive team that's based off speed and momentum. But if he has a regenerator Pokemon, it's pointless. Like, I can't do anything. Um, but, I mean, he played great, and he predicted my entire team. He team prepped very well. Having Inner Power Fire on half his team in order to take on, like, Klefki, um, Tangrowth, and Mega B. That was just good on his part. Um, I basically want to win out here at this point. Because, one, I'm really upset about this game, and I want to do better, because that was just depressing. Um, two, I still want to fight to get um, the one week the uh, one playoff buy, because at this point, um, Mr. Seenster's here. Um, he has for sure a playoff spot, and soon enough he'll get a confirmed um, playoff buy, because there's two buys, and I want to make sure, because it's top six out of the entire league, I want to make sure I get that second one. But now I need Loris to lose this week, or at least me to win out and he lose at least one more, and I need to somehow get a high No, it doesn't even matter. He needs to lose twice, because apparently they do... Um, if there's a tie, they look at um, kills. They look at who has the most kills. Apparently, they decide not to look at who has the most, um, or who did better against the other person, you know, record-wise. Or just differential in general. Because I have a differential, but he still has higher kills for some reason. Just be based off of forfeit, which is dumb. But, I'm not salty. But, that'll be it for the SDL this week. Um, hopefully we do not get our, um, asses handed to us next time. Um, make sure to check out the APA if you didn't already. Uh, sub, like, share, deuces.